It's time to look up and say hello and everything. Welcome to here to the club. It's very true. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Um.
I wanted to start out with a couple new things there. This is an old thing that has uh, continued to to uh, uh, sort of uh, mutate before my very eyes over the space of about nine years. Uh, recently, parts of it made its way made their way into a movie called Zeisters, which once it surfaced on the screen became an, something that we all fervently hoped would disappear soon from the screen and uh, thought we had lucked out in that regard and that somewhere in the southern hemisphere it had disappeared but it was uh, purchased by a company called Troma Productions which is a name to conjure with without a doubt and they have retitled the movie Fat Boy Goes Nutsoid Aiming, aiming at a market, I think, that I can almost picture from that title. You know, Score by Leo Kotke. Uh, I have a way with my career that is pretty wild. also has a fragment of uh, something from the Rick and Bob Report, which was a comedy special that I wrote the music for. And uh, it's just a very small fragment of it in case anybody from the publishing company is here tonight. The Rick and Bob Report where it was a show dedicated to two people going around interviewing people from the lower end of the bell curve to see what they had to say about their lives. <laughs> and uh, when they sat down to think who could write the music for something like that, they thought of me. Who did the score for Fat Boy Goes Nuts? <laughs> was that the redoubtable God? Yes, that was. Yeah.
This next piece gives me a chance to inflict, uh, to expose, to uh, abjure, to ridicule uh, a flaw that I've discovered in classical theory, which uh, uh, has occurred to me after only reading music for the last six months. I don't know why it's taken everybody else so much time to discover this, but uh, because it's in the same key, they've... Uh, Composers have claimed that you can use an interval like this and claim that it sounded just great. If you're in, if you're in the key of what's so it's there's sort of a seventh on top of it, something or there. They're all in the key, they would, but what they're trying to claim is that anything that's in the key will sound fine with anything else in the key at any time. I think is what they're trying to get away with. And when they were confronted with the argument that they were trying to get away with something, which is probably a confrontation that happened only in the nether regions of my own mind, they had some slimy excuse, some cowardly withdrawal. And, uh, Proof enough is their, uh, the compositions themselves, where they use these infernal passing notes, they're called, or passing tones. Uh, boy, oh boy. Let's go to a Welsh burial tonight. modulate at least so I, you know uh, it's getting better though there that was Koyana Scott's stunt was to play this interval so fast that you didn't notice it went by and I claim that since they uh, work it into the piece so deftly at such a busy spot where you can't detect it it's because they know it it stinks that it basically 
This is a flaw in the theory, and it's one everybody's ignoring. It's the emperor's clothes. Well, I won't stand for it. Uh, tara, tara. Uh, and I'll stop just before he commits his crime here, because you might miss it otherwise. Uh, the interesting thing is, is that uh, it's in this section here. No, I didn't hear anything. Do you, uh, excuse me. I must be going. Why, well, it's almost as... There's another one in this tune, which I am going to try and play. It's very hard to play, of course. Uh, and then, you know, if you had two days, you probably couldn't figure what the next note would be in that progression. another one well, oh Lord. okay Ooh. could we D high middle the guitar a little bit on the DY Not that much. Several passing notes there. I wanted to throw them all in. Just... to play another one of these sorts of pieces. I uh, last heard this uh, at my uncle uh, uncle's funeral a few years ago. Vern Soash was his name. And a guy that I never got to know particularly well, uh, but who claimed uh, on several occasions when we had a chance to talk to each other to live two lifetimes and to be now in his second lifetime. And when I went to his funeral, instead of having uh, having him back there in the funeral beer in an appropriate container of the mourners waiting to go in and so forth, he was out in the lobby of the funeral parlor <laughs> on wheels out there, sort of at an angle to the wall like a sand ash tray by the elevator 
with a crowd full of, you know, relatives standing around trying desperately to act as though there wasn't a dead body right in the middle of their midst, <laughs> let alone somebody they knew. And then I thought about that for a long time. Nobody ever really came up with it, uh, the answer to why he was out there. I've decided, given the nature of this tune, which was coming over the speakers in the parlor there, you know, the tune being called uh, Sleepers Awake, in at least several translations from the German, that Vern was trying to set out on his third lifetime. And he didn't want to waste any time coming all the way back out of the chapel back there. Leave me out by the door with my friends all around. That's expecting too much of a piece of music. Somebody says, baby, what you doing? I've been wondering where you've been Now and then I think about you and me No use fighting about things we can't recall Cause it don't matter now at all Just come on in Baby, we'll laugh and sing and we'll make love let the telephone ring Ring, ring, doorbell ring Come on in, I got Mel Blank on the radio I'm glad you came around 
I've been feeling down talking to Tony and Mario. You know they make good conversation. Still it ain't no consolation, cause I got love. Baby, I'll give you some, and if somebody comes, let the doorbell ring. Time, all the time 
you lost it all And yesterday is gone I don't know where I come from Wonder where I'm going Sometimes I feel like a tiny island floating in the sea And palm trees sway, don't get in the way It's a tropical ease And everywhere that I keep my silence, no sound returns to me endless waves and the love that you gave washing over me but yesterday is gone I don't know where I come from wonder where I
This is a tune that I wrote in an, uh, an attempt to uh, 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 live up to my own attention span, more or less. This is a. This is, I've always had the theory that uh, people only listen to a few notes in a given tune, anyhow. Usually the chorus, and usually about half of that, and that's what you really wait for. And once it's passed, you wait to, you know, hopefully another chorus will come around sometime. And. Uh, that's been, you know, that habit has been disparaged by musicologists, but I've found reason to take advantage of it and wrote a tune uh, that uh, is changeless from bar to bar. So it's as long as you want, for one thing. It's a very flexible piece of, piece of music. And uh, I, I have to admit that I, in, in writing this thing uh, according to plan, I succeeded beyond all my wildest dreams and created something so uh, so uh, bl blandly hypnotic that uh, I was soon the only person in the room getting off on the tune. Uh, those are terrible situations where the performer's really having a great time and the audience can't understand why. And I was... I think my plan was transparent. You could see behind the, the little flurry of notes, the same flurry of floret of notes, the diminutive of notes, a gleet of notes. Any, anybody in here know what a gleet is? I'm not going to tell you. You can look it up. But it'll, depending on what dictionary you have, it either has one or two definitions. One is a discharge from a horse's nose, just to just to uh, just to whet your appetite, It'll make you want to expand that vocabulary, and fling words like glee down into the next uh, conversation. This tune, as a result, has been changed. I I, uh, I now modulate in a couple spots, and uh, I changed the time signature also. And that's a devastating move for somebody, and you know, at, at this point in my career, to start changing time signatures. Four four has been so good to me all these years. I don't know why I should start messing with it now. It really has, too. I can't get enough of it. <laughs> it was a big problem that I had learning the guitar because uh, that was the first thing that I dreamed up on it, an E chord. And that's that was enough right there. I mean, that's, that is very seductive, and it had me flat for like uh, weeks. Remember the next chord I had was no I, A would have been much more productive, but no G. And immediately I knew that G was the correct key and E was just a sham. And between the two, I could you know match the weather, match my mood. It held me up for a long time. I'm gonna I better play this. <laughs> It also has a pause in the uh, middle so that I can look up and see if you're still with me or not. Uh, there may have been more than one reason for those passing notes.
Still here. It picks up now, but no more than this.
Dickie Betts a few years ago as a sort of improvisation one night. Impressionist poet named uh, George Trakel. Yeah, well, I'm going to give a lecture on him next next uh, set. I found out a lot about this guy. He, he had a short life, but very anecdotal it was. It was extraordinary what this guy was up to. If you want to read him, he's been published by Logbridge Roads, some company in Durango, Colorado. Meanwhile, I'm going to play this. This is called Little Martha, which uh, has convinced me that it's written for a, a tiny pig or a small child of some sort. <laughs> something, uh, something, uh, you know, beloved and unbearably cute. It's a beautiful song. I really would like to know who or what Martha was. That's right. Sounds like the other one. If I had any guts, I'd try one more now, you know, instead of just those two, I could... Oop. I'm in trouble now. We're all in trouble. I, I 
I thought that I wrote this tune. I, I believed this for like six months. This is like thinking I wrote the Star Spangled Banner. I don't know how I could have done this, but I, I thought I wrote this. Something else that uh, I haven't, uh, well, it isn't uh, on anything else I've done before. I'm trying to squeeze in some of the new stuff here. This was written by uh, a guy named Richard Gillowitz who started playing guitar because he saw me on the tube 12 years ago. And, uh, and uh, he, uh, until then, he'd wanted to be Robert Plant. After me, he wanted to be, wanted to be Wood. And, uh, went out and got a guitar and started to play. And he drove uh, one of the greater distances that I'm aware of that anybody's driven to one of my sets from Birmingham in Alabama up to some northern northern uh, sort of uh, uh, stain uh, in Pennsylvania where I was working. And he got there for the last, you know, zilch of the last set. And uh, so I said a little backstage. He played a tune for me, and it stank. It was miserably uh, inept, and uh, I was really tempted to tell him that. It would be kind of nice once in a while, just to, but uh, I didn't. And uh, as a result, he allows me now to play this tune, and, and, which is one of his that I can play, unlike the ones that are beyond everybody else. Um, he calls this echoing uh, wilderness, which is, uh, you know, his titles haven't changed as much as his songwriting has. It's the, the title stinks also. Uh, so I like to call this echoing, uh, echoing Gillowitz instead. I think it's more, more appropriate. Thing here. 
for me to keep talking because this thing sounds like I'm playing but I'm not or nor is anyone else when I play this they're playing they're playing it's all the difference in the world but it doesn't I'm suddenly aware it doesn't sound like diddly it took me two weeks to learn how to do this of this inordinately long introduction here to thank you again for coming out tonight and to try and uh, also trying to talk and play at the same time 
which is something I've always admired in these lounge acts. Uh, but I'm going to have to stop now. side and hiding with it.
Thank you very much. Again, well, thanks to Rory.